Hi everyone, Paul here from the World in 360 and today we're going to make a little video on how to edit GoPro Fusion Studio with the new release of version 1.2 which comes with it some great new enhancements, um, a quicker workflow and now we have the ability to actually stitch GPR files after we've edited them in a third party software. So when I say third party software, we have options available to us. We have Lightroom, which will recognize GPR files. And we have Photoshop Camera Raw, which recognizes the raw GPR files from the GoPro camera. And we have other software that's available out there that will recognize raw images where you can do the editing. So this is going to show you the workflow that we need to carry out before we actually stitch the images using the GoPro Fusion version 1.2 software. So we're going to get started. Now, as I said, this one's for Lightroom. You can do it in Photoshop if you want. I can make another video if needed on how to do it in Photoshop Camera Raw. So we've opened up Lightroom. And what we need to now do is add the folder. So let's go add folder. And as you'll see, GPR test popped up because I've already taken some raw photographs yesterday. It's been warm and sunny in Portugal. Took the opportunity to rush out, grab a couple of images and uncheck all the boxes because I have some GPRs there and I have some edited files. So we're going to grab two files here, the front and back. So let's grab the front and the back files. So we have two, Bordalo's Fox in Lisbon. And then we're going to import the two of them. You'll notice they're GPR files. Just so you know, it is raw files. We have the two, let's go to develop, and we have two pictures, front and back view. I'm going to choose this one to edit because there's a lot more information in there so we can actually see when we change some settings. So. As you can see, Fusion done not a bad job of the picture. But I always like to change the white balance and other things as well. So let's change the white balance to daylight. I prefer the color tone of the daylight. It's very slight. Change in temperature and tint, not a lot. I then like to use the auto feature in um, Lightroom and Photoshop just to give me an idea of what it looks like. Uh, normally does a good job of it, but I'm going to drop the exposure down to zero because I thought that was just too bright. 50-50 for the highlights and shadows seems okay. I could adjust the clarity, the vibrance, the saturation, but I'm going to leave that as is because I'm quite happy with that image. But what I do like to do is go down to the dehaze and by adjusting the slider, I can actually change the contrast and take out the UV that the camera finds. I'm going to set it to 40. Yep, happy with that. And I'm going to leave, as I said, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. I'm happy with that. If I wanted to do an HDR effect, I could always slide the highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. And now what I want to do is I want to copy those settings because both pictures were taken at the same time. So they're all going to be the same settings. So develop, copy, okay. And go to the other um, image, develop and paste. So I've pasted the exact same settings for both images. So when we stitch them together, that's not going to look a bit silly. So what do we do now? Well, we need to actually export those two images. So let's grab a hold of the two images, right click and export. So let's export those. There we go. Now we can export to where? Well, you need to export to the same folder as the original photos. Uncheck the box for to put in a subfolder and then we want to rename the files. We can use file name, we can use custom, 
But what we actually need to use is file name and sequence. So you've got different options there. Obviously it become an untitled, but what we want to do is choose file name sequence. What that's going to do is add a dash one and dash two to the images. Because we are going to now actually rename them again after we export them. We have to rename them so that um, the GoPro Fusion Studio recognizes that these are GPR files and we'll open them. So skip this time. Let's open the folder, go to the Fusion, GoPro GPR test rendered. No, let's go to the back. Very end one has a dash two. Let's take that dash two out of there. What we want to put in there is underscore GPR GoPro. That's it, GPR. So now we have GoPro back 3742 underscore We then want to go into the front folder and do the same thing with the dash one. So take out the dash one underscore GPR dot JPEG. Okay, so we've renamed the two files. We can close that window and we can open up the Fusion. Okay. Let's open up the Fusion Studio version 1.2. As you'll see, it says version 1.2. Add media. Go to Fusion Studio, GPR test, open. And there we go. We have a quicker option. You notice it processed it, processed the files and then went straight to a preview rather than forming previews like it used to do. So it's a little bit faster. You'll notice I've just grabbed the photo 3742 GPR. It's recognized it immediately that that was the GPR file. I'm going to adjust the yaw for the center point when the picture opens. I'm going to adjust the pitch just a little bit because the, po the footpath had a little uh, slope in it. And that looks good. Yeah, let's adjust the roll a little bit just to flatten things out. I'm happy with that. So now if I go to the color options, you'll see that these do not work because it knows that it's a GPR file and you've already done the settings. So they've actually been disabled, which is a great thing. So you can't make a mistake and go back in there. Let's add it to the render queue. Editing 5.2 stereo, even though it's a, a JPEG, a, a photograph, that's how I set it. And now Fusion Studio will determine the approximate size of the file and whether you have enough space. If you don't have enough space, it will actually tell you. Now I'm going to save it as a TIFF file because I'm going to do some editing again after. And the approximate size now is 70 megabytes. And that's it rendered. That was not fast forwarded, by the way. That was me just pressing the render button. It's a lot faster now for rendering the JPEG images or the raw into a JPEG or a TIFF much faster than it was previously and the great thing now is it will stop any crashing because it will tell you if there's enough space where you're storing it. So let's open it. There's a photo 3742 GPR and one in brackets because I already have one with the same name because I did it previously. Let's open it up in the GoPro VR player just so you can see it's perfectly stitched the GPR image. So here we go. There you go. A little bit of noise. I find that you get a little bit of noise even at 100 ISO with 360 photographs. So I'm actually going to do a bit of noise reduction because I'm not a lover of the noise and I'm going to remove the tripod because that's an OCG thing that I have. I have to remove the tripod. So I opened in preview. Let's right click on it. Open with Adobe Photoshop. And it opened up in Adobe Raw because it's a TIFF file and that's how I've got it set up. It opens up TIFFs, NAFs, any RAW file opens it up here. And this is where I'm going to adjust the luminance noise reduction. So let's zoom into 100 and then a little bit more just to get a bit more, a little bit of noise there. 
I can put the luminance all the way up to 100. Some people might think that's a bit too fake. So we can play about with the numbers until you are happy with what you want. I'm not saying you have to use noise reduction. That's just something that I do because I like to take out most of the noise, but not too much. So slide till you're happy. 75, maybe too much. So I'm going to go with 50. So 50 in the noise reduction. And I'm going to open the image. And there it goes. It's opened up in Photoshop CC 2018. At this point, I'm going to do some global removal of any of the debris or little marks on the footpath. It's just what I do. I want to make the footpath as clean as possible. So let's make the brush a little bit smaller and use the clone stamp tool. And let's start removing some of that markings on the footpath. You don't have to do it. It's just something that I do. Everyone's got their own preferences. Okay. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Because we're picking up the drain there. Make it a little bit smaller. Let's take out that other little bit of trash. Whatever it is, mark on the footpath. I could remove the tripod at this point. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up to the 3D view click on it, I'm going to spherical panorama and open up a new panorama from that layer. There you go. Now I can actually move around in virtual reality mode and all the way around the image and I can go down to the tripod. I can reselect the, the clone stamp tool, make my brush a little bit bigger and let's remove the tripod and shadow. So Alt to select an area and then just scroll over the top of the tripod and everything. Take the tripod out. Okay, a little bit more. Cool, looks good. And V again so that I can move about in the image. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Good looking guy there. Oh, must be me. So now I need to go back to 3D export that panorama so when I open it up in Facebook or something else it's recognized as a 360 panoramic image and therefore it will play as a panoramic image you can move it about with your mouse with your phone I'm going to save that file in the exact same folder as the original so rendered there it's there save it as Bordalo Fox keep Adobe RGB embedded and that's it saved as a JPEG. I can now close Photoshop. I don't need to save the TIFF file. So don't save. And there's Bordalo Fox. I can open with. It's taking a bit of time. It's not fetching. So let's just go down and go to the VR player. Open the VR player. And select the file. And let's select Bordalo Fox. There you go. And you can scroll all about. You can look down and notice the tripod's gone. Not a bad job. Footpath looks tidy and clean. Adjust the field of view. And if you want, you could go to a little planet. Anything you want. And that is how we use version 1.2 of the GoPro Fusion Studio to edit our GPR files and stitch them together. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you want to have Photoshop video one, feel free to send me a comment and I'll happily make another video showing you how to do it with Photoshop Camera Raw. It's much the same way. A couple of extra steps, but not much in it. 